loud. And we are now recording and I'll go on mute and let you get started. All right. So this class is designed to give a basic overview of the responsibilities and duties of the Kingdom Chronicler. <clears throat> it's specifically designed for the Kingdom of Onstiora. Each kingdom is going to have slightly different rules and regulations that they fall, but some of the principles are the same. So the way that the Chronicler's office works, <clears throat> you have the local, the regional, and the kingdom. The duties of the local Chronicler pretty much involve just making the newsletter. You make the newsletter for your local group. The regional's job is more administrative. They have to check the locals' newsletters, chroniclers, or the local chroniclers' newsletters. There we go. Um, for their region, they make sure that it has the five things that it has to have in there. It doesn't include the things that it's not supposed to have. Then they email or turn in a report to the kingdom telling which groups have submitted their newsletters, which groups have not submitted their newsletters. Then the kingdom's chronicler's job is a combination of both. You have to be able to make a newsletter because you make the kingdom newsletter. And then you also have the administrative responsibilities. So the newsletter for Onstiora is the Black Star. This is made each month. You have to make it each month. There are no exceptions. There are no emergency backups. There's no, oh, well, I didn't have enough stuff to do this month. Every month must be completed. The Black Star must be completed and submitted to the publication people and to the Society Chronicler no later than the 10th of the month. So the deadline that the Kingdom Chronicler issues for Event ads, letters, poems, anything that's going to run in the Black Star is the first. That, this gives us time to compile it, to edit it, to put it into the Black Star, make sure there are no problems, make sure we have all the correct citations, and then we submit it for review to, usually we have the regional chroniclers do our proofreading, and then we turn it in no later than the 10th. <clears throat> In the newsletter, you have to have, so the full thing is 16 pages. We are restricted to the page number by the publication people because the newsletter itself is still printed and mailed out to people who pay for that additional service on top of their membership. So we, they give us our restriction. Your local groups, their newsletter can be as short or as long as they want because most of them are no longer publishing it. They're just doing it virtually. But since ours is still published, we are restricted to 16 pages. And the thing that's really a kicker for the Kingdom Chronicler is that it's not up to 16 pages, it's exactly 16. But even in that, there's some restrictions. So the first page is the cover. You have to have the cover page, you can't leave that off. The next page is all your legal mumbo jumbo. It gives you the Disclaimer on the fact that we don't claim to own anything in the newsletter. It talks about how to submit things for the newsletter. It's all the legal stuff that has to be in there. Then page 16 is the back cover. The top half is required to be blank because this is where they put the mailing information. Back when we used to print the labels and put them on them ourselves, we would have mailing label parties. Uh, people in Namron should remember those very fondly. The, that's where the label goes, is on that top half of the page. And we used to fold the black star in half, and now they don't fold it in half. When they mail it, they leave it full size. But that's why the top half still has to be blank, because it is still mailed. The bottom half includes the kingdom calendar. In order for an event to be considered an official event, it must be published in the kingdom calendar, which is online, but that's also on the black star and it must have an event ad in the Black Star. And then page 15 
is your directory. This is where you would find phone numbers and mailing addresses for all the kingdom officers, uh, all group seneschals, group B and B's if they have one, so that you can get in contact with any of the people in charge in your local area or in the kingdom wide. So those four pages are already restricted. I can't take those out to give myself more room. So that means that then I have 12 pages that I have to fill. I know I counted two. <laughs> I have 12 pages that I have to fill every month. Now, some months there are going to be a lot of event ads. And so you can actually wind up having to ask people to do half page event ads in order to get them all filled. October is an example of that. In Onstiora, October is a very busy event month usually. And so I struggle to make sure that I have enough room for all of the event ads. And the way that the rules are written, and this is a corporate policy, not just a kingdom policy, says that the event ad must run in the Black Star the month of the event. So if your event is October 15th, your event ad must be in the October Black Star. <clears throat> now you can ask that it run early, but it has to be in October. The exception to that is if your event is in the first week, so the first seven days of a month, then it can run the month before. It, but it's gotta run one or the other. So October is very busy. And in addition to the event ads, which have to be there, we also have the letters from the kingdom officers um, and from the crown. So each month, the week before the end of the month. So for, this is August right now, which means the Black Star that I am currently working on is the October Black Star. I had the September Black Star, I turned in August 10th. Okay, so we run one month ahead. That way they have time to publish it and get it out to everybody before the month that it's the month of. So right now I'm currently working on the October Black Star. So today, one week before September 1st, which is the deadline for all submissions, I sent an email out to the greater officers of state, to the crown, and to some of the lesser officers, such as the rapier marshal, the minister of children, those type of offices. And I reminded them that there, any submission they have for the Black Star is due one week from today. So that's one thing that you have to do every month is the week before you have to remember to email the greater officers and the crown and say hey don't forget in a week i'm going to need your letters for the black star and you have to include what month is for because unless they deal with it on a regular basis it's really easy to forget what month you're working towards just like the treasurer's office runs one month behind the chronicler's office runs one month above so you have to send that email I have to check off my notes of what all I'm talking about. So you get the email from them, and then you also have to send an email out to any group that has an event in the month if you have not already received an event ad from them. The Kingdom Chronicler's responsibility is to make sure that you get those event ads. Now, the group hosting it is technically responsible for the event ad but you have to make sure that you've reminded them if you haven't gotten it. So starting at this point of the month, the next week, two weeks are really where my busy time is every month. The last week of a month and the first week of the next month are where I'm working on wrapping up that Black Star. So this week I'll be going through my files. I'll be making sure that I've already received any event ads for October. This year those happen to all be virtual event ads. But if they're going to have long lasting business, in other words, if they're going to give out awards, they have to have an event ad in the Black Star. Whether it's virtual or in person, that part does not matter. So I'll be checking the emails that I've already gotten. I'll be double checking event ads to make sure they meet the requirements. I'll be making sure they don't have anything on there that they can't have. For example, we can no longer use the word fee in the SCA. It has to do with our tax status as a 501c3. But so that's why we have event registration. We don't charge an event fee. 
And so that's one of the things that I'm responsible for checking is to make sure that the correct terminology is used because once it's published, you can't take it back. And so if something is published with the wrong terminology, it comes back on me and I could be the one who would get in trouble for that. So I check the terminology on all the event ads. For in-person events, I make sure that they have the comment about the minors have to have a signed release or be with an adult. I have to check and make sure that they have the restriction about whether or not alcohol is allowed on site and if so, in what format. I have to make sure that they have the statement of where checks are made out to. Those things that are included are for in-person events. While we're doing virtual events, they don't have to include those statements, but I still have to make sure that the rest of the terminology is incorrect. For virtual events, I have to make sure that they say what hosting platform they're using. Are they using Google Meets? Are they using Zoom? Are they using Discord? Are they using something else? Because the populace need to know when they look at an event ad, how do I get to the event? So in person, it's got to include directions or a map so that you know how to get to the event. For a virtual event, same thing. How am I going to get there? So then if any event ad has not been received by this point, that's when I start emailing the group Seneschal. Go, hi, I know you have an event coming up. I haven't received your event ad yet. You know, please make sure you get it to me by the first. That's the deadline. Then on the first of each month, I go through and I double check, have I received everything I have? Do I have my letters from the greater officers of state? Do I have my letter from the crown? Now they are not required to give me a letter for the Black Star, just like your no local newsletter. The officers are not required to put anything in. There are some exceptions to that, like some of the financial stuff does have to be published. So the end of year report and the annual budget are required by kingdom law to be published in the Black Star, but that only happens once a year. Local groups a lot of times have that same restriction. But other than that, the officer letters are entirely up to them. So I check and make sure I have those things. Anything I don't have that I have to have for that next newsletter, I then have to email people. And if I'm waiting on an event ad and I've already emailed the Seneschal once, my follow-up email is going to go to the Seneschal and to the B&B &B if they have one. Now, we, social media is a great, wonderful tool, but we have to remember, at least from the officer core, that it's not considered official communication. So I have to send an email to these different people if there's a question or a problem or if I'm missing something. I, a lot of times I'll still post on Facebook or other social media and go, hey guys, I'm missing this thing because I know that they might see that notice sooner than they're going to see an email. But you have to send the email because that's your official notification. Then once I get all the parts and pieces, I start or I finish putting it together because I don't wait until the first to start. I've already been working on it as I get stuff in. I finish putting it together. I double check that I have everything I need. This is also where I have to do a little bit of search and find. A lot of times over the past several years with social media, if there has been an official action taken place in the kingdom, it will get posted on Facebook. And they don't always remember to email that notice to me. For example, changes to kingdom law must be published in the Black Star to be official. So we had one uh, virtual court that was done where a statement was made. And then I did not get the follow-up information to put in the Black Star. So I had to contact the appropriate officers and say, you know, I need this information if it's going to be official. And they had, things had changed and so it didn't get published anyway. But I, I was the one who had to contact them and say, don't forget, if you want this to be official, it's got to be published. This includes changes to kingdom law, things like sanctions that happen, um, any of those things that can happen at an event that still are legally binding in the, in the kingdom, they have to get published. Then I get my newsletter edited or proofread, make sure everything's the way I want it, make sure that my file size is within the restriction that I have, make sure that I compress it if I need to, <clears throat> and then I submit it. 
So that's one third of the responsibility of the Kingdom Chronicler is making the black star. That's the most visible part. That's what people see. The next third is the administrative part that lines up with what the regionals do. So this is where I have to go through the reports by my regionals, make sure that groups are submitting, make sure that we're not having any issues. I randomly will go through different group newsletters just as a spot check to make sure that they didn't forget to change the copyright date on the disclaimer, things like that. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> also in the administrative part is uh, the appointment of officers. So different offices do this differently. Some offices, the kingdom officers, the one who appoints all offices, technically that's the way it is. Technically the kingdom officer appoints all offices, but some offices, the kingdom officer has delegated that job to their deputies. So sometimes you'll have, you'll apply for a local office, you'll turn in your application and the regional is the one who makes the actual appointment of office. Um, for example, the Seneschal's office does this. And so the regional Seneschal is the one who will actually appoint the Seneschal. The treasurer's office does not. The kingdom treasurer does the appointment of office. Chronicler is the same way. So I have to go through um, application. If I have received more than one application for the same group, which we always hope for, I have to go through and check those applications make sure that their membership is still valid and that it will be valid for the next six months. This was a change that just happened at this round table where they have decided that all memberships must be valid through the entire duration of the warrant that is signed. So if you were to apply for an office today, your warrant would be signed at the January round table so your membership would have to be valid through the end of June because the next round table would be in July. So that's a new thing that I have to check, make sure that their membership's not just going to expire in the next two months, that it's gonna be good for the next eight months. Then I also, if I have multiple applications and they, as far as I can tell, all look to be good applications, people who look like they meet the qualifications, the main qualification, of course, being that you're a paid member. I then contact the local group. So I will contact the local Seneschal and the local B&B, &B, if there is one, and the regional chronicler. And I will ask them for their input because they know the people in their group better than I do. Even in my own local group, I may not know all the people applying for a job. So I want to talk to the people who do know. And I ask the Seneschal for their input. I give them a list of who's applied and say, can you give me your input? What are your opinions? How do you think each person will do at the job? Hush. Then I ask the same thing of the B&B &B if there is one. And I also have to ask the B&B &B if they wish to use their veto. So the B&B &B of a group have the right to veto one applicant of one office each time. So if I have six people who have applied for the Chronicler's office, I have to ask the B&B, &B, do you wish to use your veto on any of these people? And if they say yes, then that person's automatically out of the list. And there's any number of reasons why they may choose to do this. Most of the time, it doesn't happen. Most of the time the B&B &B are like, nope, they're all great candidates, or I can work well with all of them, or we don't have any issues, so whoever you think is best. It's very rare that a B&B &B is going to use their, B, their veto, but I'm still required and make sure because they have that right. Then once I've collected all that data, usually if there's multiple applications, there's one person who everybody has agreed at this time they think would do a better job. And this can be due to anything like, you know, life, how busy they are outside of the SCA. If they're already holding another office, that's going to influence the decision. So if two people apply and one person's already holding another office, then most likely the job would go to someone who's not because we want to give everyone an opportunity to be involved. 
We want to spread the wealth, as it were. We want everybody to have a chance to step up to do what they would like to do. And we also don't want people to get burned out. And it's really easy if you're doing multiple offices or if you hold offices back to back to back and never take a break, it's really easy to get burned out. And there, sometimes you'll see um, certain group of people, such as protégés, who feel like they should be holding offices all the time. And so again, as a kingdom officer, that's something that I have to look at. You know, have they been holding an office for eight years? Do they need a break? And if it's a concern, I'll actually contact that individual who's applied and say, hey, let's visit about this for a little bit because I don't want to appoint someone to an office and then them go, I can't do this anymore and have to quit. I also don't want anybody to feel like they have to hold an office if they really don't want to. So you have to balance all those kinds of things. But usually it's really pretty straightforward. A lot of times we only have one applicant either anyway. So then in, unless there's a problem with that applicant, they get the job. A lot of groups, they internally select who they want for an office and then they just have that one person apply anyway. So by the time it gets to me, I don't even know that there was this internal discussion, but I know some groups do it small. I know some smaller groups do it that way. In addition to appointing local officers, I also appoint my regionals and my other deputy officers. So the Kingdom Chronicler, at this time, we have three regional officers, Northern, Central, and Southern. And then I go through the applications for that, same process as the local, only I don't have to contact the Seneschal and the B&B &B for them. I contact the current regional officer and say, hey, you know, has this person, are they already a deputy? Are they already you do you know them give me your opinion and I discuss with them usually by the time someone wants to apply to be a regional they've already been a local chronicler and so the regional officer is going to have an idea for how they're going to do in addition to the deputy or the regional chroniclers I have two deputies the kingdom chroniclers office the first deputy is the historian the historian falls under the chronicler's office that job is pretty much self-regulating. They take care of their own things. They know what they have to do, but they do fall under my office. So I have to appoint that officer. Um, I also have some stuff that relates to that at Roundtable, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then my last deputy is my um, directory deputy. This was one of the best decisions I think I ever made as Kingdom Chronicler and it was instituting having a directory deputy. Every time an office transitions in the SCA, such as Seneschal, b, &B um, Greater Officer of State, those kinds of offices, the, de the directory information in the Black Star has to be updated. And it's already going to be at least one month behind simply because the, the newsletter is published a month before the month of, right? So if it were up to me to keep track of who, which offices have transitioned, it's possible that it could be several months behind just because of everything else I'm already doing. So the directory deputy, their entire job is to keep track of which of those jobs have transitioned. They send out an official email from their official email account saying, hi, we notice you've taken over this office. Can you please give me the following information to put into the Black Star? And then they send that to me once a month so that I can update the directory. So the directory deputy is an awesome job. It's not super hard, but it's so extremely important for making sure that that one piece of the administrative detail doesn't fall through the cracks. So that's really one of my favorite deputy offices because it's, it's just, it can be too much on top of everything else. Okay, and then the last third of the office responsibilities falls under this headline of being a greater officer of state. So there are certain things that all of the goofs have to do, and it's just one of those, it's just one of those responsibilities. So the first off is that as a greater officer of state, you have to attend all goof meetings. Now we have at least two, but usually four a year, um, these take place, two of them take place at Roundtable. Every year at Roundtable, 
Um, the first morning block, if you look at the schedule, there's always a block that says closed goof meeting. That's our first meeting. This is a chance for all of the greater officers of state to sit down with the crown and with the soon to be incoming crowns and their highnesses and discuss where things are at in the kingdom. The reason it's a closed door meeting is because sometimes we discuss things that need to be kept just within the office and don't need to be privy to the entire kingdom. A lot of times it's because this is where we discuss if there are problems. So for the chronicler's office, problems that would be discussed are if I have any groups that are not publishing their newsletter. One of the biggest responsibilities that I luckily have only had to actually look at once or twice during both of my times as Kingdom Chronicler is that if a group is not publishing their newsletter on time and they have missed three months is I have to start the proceeding to remove their status. So if it's a barony and they have missed three months consecutively of publication, I have to then start the procedure for them, that group to lose their baronial status and they would go down to a shire. This is an extremely intimidating thing for me to even have to think about because no one wants to be the, the officer that had to take away the baronial status of a barony in the kingdom. Luckily, it's, no, it's nothing I've ever had to totally follow through on. I only had to take the first step for, well, really it's like the fourth step, but the first big step. So if I have a group that's not publishing, the first thing is to contact the local chronicler. Hey, is there a problem? Do you need help? Did you have life happen? Do we need to find your deputy? What can we do? Then if I'm not getting any communication from them, the next step is to contact their seneschal and or BNB if they have one. Going, hey, your chronicler is not reporting. It's been a month. They're already a month past due. You know, what do we need to do? Is there something going on? Then if I'm still at this point, they're now two months behind. If we hit that third month and they're not getting anything, I'm emailing the local chronicler, the regional chronicler, the seneschal, the B&B, &B, the regional seneschal. Hey, we have a problem. This group's not reporting. They're not responding to emails. I'm not getting any response. And here's what the next step is. And this is where I have to tell groups at three months out. If I don't receive communication, and a newsletter from this group by set deadline. I then have to contact the Kingdom Seneschal and we have to begin steps to remove their status. That's as far as I've ever had to go, is by sending that email to the Kingdom Seneschal going, okay, here's the problem. Luckily, the group that was having problem, there was some things outside of the control of anyone at the time. We got it taken care of, we got them all caught up, and that was it, we just, Everything was fine. And that I've only had to get that far once. It was very intimidating for me, but as a kingdom officer, you have to understand that that is something you may have to deal with. When it comes down to it, making sure that the offices are doing what they are supposed to do falls squarely on your shoulders. So that's something that would be discussed in that goofs meeting. Usually the stuff that's discussed in that meeting is the same stuff we talk about when we give the state of the kingdom address at the end of round table. It's just, we want to keep the state of the kingdom address very positive. We want to talk about all the great things that are happening. That early morning meeting is where we have a chance to talk about any problems there might be. And usually what happens is in the morning, we bring it up going, okay, here's a problem I'm having in my group. And another officer will be like, oh yeah, we're having these same problems. And then by the end of the day, we've managed to resolve it because we see so many people at Roundtable that we can take care of a lot of those things. So attending that meeting. The other meeting that a lot of times we have is at coronation. At the end of the day, after we've had step down court and then step up court, sometimes their new majesties will want to have a quick goofs meeting just to touch base with the goofs about things that might have changed in the past two and a half months since Roundtable. Um, I've been at two other goofs meetings that were called as emergency meetings. One of those, I actually was the regional chronicler at the time, and I was stepping in for the kingdom chronicler who was not able to go. And that's where we decided to officially remove having to pay for event ads from the Black Star. So that was actually a really cool uh, emergency goof meeting to be able to go to. So attending things, 
those required meetings are one of the things. At Roundtable, you also are required to have a warrant. So during the month, six weeks leading up to Roundtable, I'm going through my roster warrant. I'm making sure that everybody who's on it is still on it. Anytime I appoint a new local officer, I take out the old person's information, put the new person's information in, but I still have to go through and make sure that everything's up to date, check all my membership expiration dates, make sure that no one's memberships expired. That's a job of the regional. Anytime a membership's coming close to expiring, they contact that local chronicler going, hey, your membership expires in a month. Don't forget to send us the information once you renew. I have to input it into that roster. If I haven't heard from the regional about it, then I contact the regional going, hi, I haven't heard from you about this person. Can you please double check? So a lot of times, if I have questions about what's going on in a local group, I don't contact the local group themselves up front, I'm going to contact the regional and ask them, say, hey, you know, can you send out this information? So if something comes up at roundtable, say in the Goose meeting, we make a new legally binding kingdom law decision and it affects my officers. First thing I do when I get home from roundtable is send an email to my regionals going, can you please disseminate this information out to all the locals? Um, and then the same thing the other way. If I have questions, I'm going to contact my regional first. If my regional doesn't know the answer, a lot of times I'll say, well, would you mind contacting so-and-so? If it's within two weeks of roundtable, I'm going to contact them myself just because at that point I'm worried about timing and making sure that I have the roster complete before roundtable. I have to have it printed and take with me so that the Kingdom Seneschal and their majesties can sign it. So staying on top of the warrant is another part. And then also at Roundtable, I have to teach the training classes. So a lot of offices, it's the warranting class. We don't call it a warranting class in the chronicler's office because you can still be a warranted chronicler even if you were not able to attend those classes. Um, we ask that you get training either from your regional or from the outgoing local or from the kingdom. So you still have to attend training. We just don't call it a warranting class because you don't have to be at round. You still have to get that training. But so I teach those classes. Currently at round table, I teach a how to be a local chronicler class. So it's basically the local chronicler warranting class. And then I also teach a, here are the duties and responsibilities of the regional chronicler. So my regional chroniclers usually attend that meeting so that we can discuss if they have any current concerns or problems or things they would like to have updated or things they would like addressed. And then it's also open to anybody who thinks they would like to become a regional chronicler and they want to learn what the duties are, how to go about the job and just see what it's like. It's a really great class to see kind of a behind the scenes thing because my regionals and I are usually discussing all kinds of things going on that locals may not be aware happen within the chronicler's office. So that one's always a good class. I also have to contact the historian and see if they would like to have a time block to teach a class. We haven't had a historian teach an actual class in a, in a couple of years, and it all depends on the historian at the time. Several years ago, the historian liked to have a time block. She used it as a time to be able to meet with people, to ask questions. Now that we do a lot of it online, it's reduced the need to actually have an in-person class because the historian does a lot of it just through email, through social media, and they can harvest the, the information they're looking for that way. But they do have the option of having a class. And then the last duty is to update the handbook. So the, the, um, king, the Kingdom Chronicler's handbook is the one that I'm responsible for. And going into round table every two years, we go through it, we make sure that there's not anything that needs to be updated. Um, there was a change that had been made about four and a half years ago as, as far as pacing goes on applying for an office and appointing an officer, but it was not written in the Chronicler's Handbook. And so I decided to update that piece of information. It was something we were doing in practice. It's that idea that, um, an office has to be open for at least 30 days 
before it can be closed. So, and it's 30 days from the date of the first application. And that's where the confusion was. People thought, well, if I open it May 1st, then it should be closed June 1st. But the actual wording said that it had to be 30 days from the date of the first application. So if nobody applied for the office until May 31st, it's got to stay open another 30 days. But because that wasn't written down, it was a little bit confusing. So that was the update that I did this last time to the Kingdom Handbook, was just putting that in writing, making it a little bit clearer so that anybody who um, needs to double check that kind of stuff, it's right there in writing. Because a lot of times the chroniclers will tell the Seneschal that, but that's not how we do it. And then there's a little bit of confusion. So we just wanted to make sure that it's clear and consistent across the board. So that was the update that I made. But so that's one of the jobs that you do as a kingdom officer. The um, kingdom Earl Marshall actually did some major edits to his handbook. The rapier marshal is currently working on doing some major edits to his. So that's something that the kingdom officer does every couple of years is just check and update that handbook as needed. And then it gets published. Uh, or usually on the website, any major changes to the law itself, of course, have to be published in the Black Star. So like this last month, um, the Kingdom Earl Marshal had some changes that needed to be officially legally binding for the Kingdom, so they got published in the Black Star. And then the last piece of administrative duty is to keep track of the Kingdom webpage for the Chronicler's Office. Now, currently, the Kingdom web minister makes those updates for me. Um, I could take over that job and do it myself um, if I wished, but he's using um, a program that I'm not familiar with. So for me, because I'm not going to have major changes on a regular basis to the website, it's easier just to say, I just email him going, hi, I noticed this update needs to be made. Can you please fix it for me? And the Kingdom Web Minister's Office is usually really good about getting right on top of those changes. And that's one of those that it depends on the Kingdom Chronicler's comfort level with the technology being used, the Kingdom Web Minister's comfort level with letting other people make their own updates or if he wants to maintain control of it. And so that's going to change from officer to officer. But for me, it works out well this way because the only changes I usually have are, oh, hey, this link is broken. Can you fix it? Or, hey, I've had a regional officer change. I need to update their information on the web page. Predominantly, I'm not going to have really any other changes than that unless I'm updating training uh, information. And I did make that change. I updated a, here's how to be a local chronicler. The paper that I made for the class that I taught for this, I then put on the website so that anybody who wants to find it at a later date, that paper's right there. So those are the main things for being a Kingdom Chronicler. I think I've pretty much covered them all. Um, you do have to use the official email, just like any other officer. Um, you have, for a kingdom level officer, you have to check your email every single day. I actually have it on my phone, so I get it anytime an email. I don't always respond right at that moment, but I need to be able to check and make sure it's not an earth shatteringly, oh my goodness, this has to be addressed right now kind of email. And I have actually gotten one or two of those in my time in office. And I've had to stop whatever else I was doing and say, I'm terribly sorry, but this has got to be dealt with right now. I've received phone calls from the Kingdom Seneschal. I've received phone calls from their majesties going, we have a problem. We have to deal with this right now. Luckily, um, I haven't gotten those when I've been driving. I've usually been the passenger and the other person driving was like, okay, I'm not listening to your conversation anymore because it's official business and they can't listen in. Um, sometimes I've had to stop the car and actually get out of the car because my children were in the car and they, I didn't want to have to say, okay, y'all can't listen because how do you not listen? So I would just get out of the car. Those types of things don't happen a lot in the Kingdom Chronicler's office. They do happen uh, from time to time. And so you just, you deal with them when you can. But that's why you have to check the email every day. You are expected to reply to emails as a Kingdom officer within 24 hours. Um, if it's something that needs a reply. Now, my local chroniclers email me their newsletter every month. I don't reply to those because the regionals are replying and saying, yeah, thanks, we got it. 
I just have to get them. But if it's an email directly to me going, hi, I have a question, or can we fix something, or we have a problem, those I have to address within 24 hours. And if it's an email from their majesties or the kingdom seneschal, um, a lot of times I'm going to respond as soon as I can, unless it's something I know that can wait till the next day. A lot of times it just depends. So you do have to use the official email. You do have to check email every day. You do have to have your phone number published in the Black Star. You do have to be available for phone calls in an emergency setting. We all have on there no phone calls after nine because we all have lives in addition to this. Um, but sometimes those kinds of things come up and you do have to be able to address them. Um, I also get emails from society for things that get published in the Black Star. Those have to get published. Usually they give you a time frame. Um, so that's an additional thing that's coming outside of the kingdom. We'll also get publications for uh, inner kingdom events, such as Gulf War or Known World Dance Symposium or Known World Cook Symposium or those kinds of things. Those event ads get published as well because they are for the entire kingdom or for the known So we, we have to find room for those. Those types of things are on a monthly basis, but they do happen. The stuff from society is usually every other month. Right now, I feel like I'm getting stuff from society every month that gets published because we keep having updates like changes to board meetings, um, changes to how to handle a virtual event, uh, a lot of those things that are unusual. But you do get the IKD, uh, IKD, IDK, IDK, that's it. Um, it's the known world directory. Uh, <laughs> and you do get that every two months, and that includes all the kingdom seneschals, the board of directors, all that kind of information. So if you are ever interested in applying for the kingdom's chronicler's job, with the one requirement that we have, in addition to, of course, you have to be a paid member, you have to have been a local and a regional chronicler. Because the Kingdom Chronicler's office does both jobs. It makes a newsletter, just like the local, and it's administrative, just like the regionals. We ask that anybody who wants the Kingdom Chronicler's job to have held those two offices, just so that you're not walking into it blind. You have an idea of what's going on. You already have, you're familiar with the setup. You're familiar with the five pieces that have to go into the newsletter. And it's, it makes it much easier to do the job. Of course, there are always exceptions. Um, don't feel like you can't apply just because you haven't been a regional chronicler. Um, but those are things that we're going to ask about. Those are just some additional training that you would get because of that if you hadn't done that job. And of course, you have to be a paid member. And I think that's everything. So if you have any questions about this class, feel free to email the Kingdom Chronicler's office. Feel free to ask questions on social media. And thank you very much, Your Excellency, for letting us do this class and recording it and running the technology stuff so that I could just sit here and talk. You're welcome. Thank you so much for teaching it. Um, I thought I knew a decent amount of stuff about uh, Chronicler's office just from, you know, having dealt with chronicler while being landed or being seneschal or whatever and I'm like no I learned a bunch so <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot of it that's behind the scenes that you don't know until you get there yeah absolutely yeah yeah so cool well I will definitely uh get this posted it'll probably be tomorrow but and that way yeah I'm sure people will come back and watch it and learn just as much as I did so awesome thank you so much I appreciate it Yep, thanks. You have a good uh, rest of your night. You too. All right, bye.